Alright guys, Tactical Grub here today, and this is a story that kind of brings me back, because a couple of months ago I was talking about Rostermania, talking about this mysterious rich guy, and you guys may have heard me talk about these if you watched, you know, a few videos back in that Rostermania, that summer period, and he's really been on the radar since, like, April time when I was uh, helping make these weekly recap posts which were going up on the subreddit. So, this post is from the Cod Burner himself, and you guys may not have heard this name, but effectively he was the real spy of the Rostermania period over the summer where he was leaking crazy rumours and you know, did it for the majority of this year really, all the main Rostermania periods. Some people reckon that the pros and the upper echelons know who this guy is but still leaking a load of information and he's put together, or he or she I guess, has put together this fantastic really in-depth detail post on the subreddit and effectively I'm just going to go through it today and bring it to your guys' attention because content around COD burner and stuff like that is not allowed as far as I'm aware on the main r slash COD competitive subreddit so it's over on his own COD burner subreddit and yeah I'll link it down in the description box below if you want to just go read it yourself or go over any things that I don't go through because the first little bits I want to go over relatively quickly because it's a really long post it'll probably take a little bit of time to get through oh, I'm back at university by the way you may have noticed and yeah so the first few points I'll go through a little bit quicker and then towards the end there's some real meaty stuff in there and it actually is really intriguing the roster moves that could have been on the cards given what happened in the end was almost underwhelming to an extent especially how excited people were for the potential optic swaps and who was coming on that team maybe they were even going to be leaving optic back in that april time and i actually thought it was quite likely they were leaving optic based on what codburner says and it brings me all back to that here and it seems very likely indeed so this rich guy also at the end of this article there's pretty strong evidence that points towards you know an individual and we'll go through that we don't know exactly who the guy is but we have a twitter tag and all of that juicy stuff so like if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always all that good stuff and yes yeah, so cod banner says right if you weren't around for seattle when optic roster of skump crim formal and karma broke up i heard from multiple people the plan was for them to leave together and join some rich guy so this was the real origins of the story so starting from point number one of about 11 there was this AMA in February that Crim6 did. Someone asked him here, has any of the optic management changes affected you? So there was this thing going on with Infinite taking over optic, Hex who like, sold part of the team. And Crim says, yes, more than any of you know, don't even know, haven't even met who is calling the shots running this org now. I want to be blunt about this. We are clearly upset at the whole situation. And of course, this is when there was still the dynasty lineup that broke up at Seattle. Skump, Crim, Formal, Karma was the team at the time. And yeah, it was actually heavily rumoured that they might be leaving optic altogether. And it, there is, as I say further evidence further in this post that that could have actually definitely been the case so it seems that this rich guy saw this AMA and decided okay maybe this is a chance to strike for these players so at CWL Atlanta the the guys that supposedly had conversations with rich guy on Skype and they also met him apparently in uh, in public or like at some bar there was this other post some other thread that someone you know wrote all of this stuff. I don't want to go through it, but I'll link it down below. And you know, when they left, they got into a Rolls Royce. Crim and Skump were supposedly talking to Rich Guy, and they also talked to. He also talked to Attach as well, which will uh, become increasingly important later when we talk about the teams, uh, the progression of the different teams that uh, the Rich Guy was looking into. So Birmingham is really interesting. Rich Guy took Skump and Crim out to dinner to smooth things over because apparently it was a little bit rough. You know, Skump was supposedly wasted at you know Atlanta, so to smooth things over a little bit. He upped his offer for 20k a month uh, salary for each of the next four games. So at this point, they'd come top four at Birmingham. They lost a splice in a game five round 11 and got pretty excited. And yeah, so this is when Formal wanted Karma gone and tried to get him dropped because he was costing, supposedly. Gunless would easily be available since Rise didn't win yet. So apparently he then told Krim that he only wanted all four of them. And Krim and Karma already thought that they needed a team change, or like an organization change, away from Infinite at that point. And supposedly Attach said that Rich Guy already knew Cod would be 5v5 and that Krim said they want him as their fifth at the bar in uh, at a bar in Birmingham so apparently rich guy was looking at attached plus the optic dynasty on an organization which just to make this clear he doesn't have an organization per se I think there's some he's trying to set one up when he actually comes into the scene but there's no set organization that this guy is an owner of at the current time so Seattle this is an interesting one I heard rich guy took crim attached fellow dashy and study out to dinner at a steakhouse which you'll see as a theme in it he does this a lot then they went to a few bars of crim and attached in the players lounge the Optic guys were all saying it was a done deal and they were leaving Optic. Then we all know what happened. They came top 16 at Seattle 
everyone knew Optic needed a change, that was when the talk of Gunless coming up with him taking Karma's spot. So really, Optic's tragic performance here may have been a factor to prevent them going over to this rich guy's, you know, whatever organization he's going to pull out of thin air. Because if they didn't perform so badly, they might have kept as a four, and then they'd be off that team given the infinite situation uh, in the back pocket. So Crim and Scump really wanted John and Octane, supposedly. John was cool with playing with them, but only if it was rich guy, since he thought he'd get so much blame if they didn't win from the fans, which is kind of interesting. I heard that night they settled on Scump, Crim, John and Formal, and they had a party to celebrate. Karma wasn't told at the time for sure he was getting dropped, and wouldn't go to Rich Guy's team with the others, so he went to the party. We all heard what happened here, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but some t-shirt being being painted by like a stripper or something and yeah okay you, you could read the rest of this paragraph if you want this was supposedly the shirt apparently karma said this wasn't his shirt but multiple shirts are supposedly made and this may have been something or what something looking like you know okay it's an interesting situation don't want to read too much into that just looking for the whole the story progression really so yeah skunk crim and a bunch of other players went to the bar with the rich guy okay they pied like all weekend and Everyone thought it was a done deal when they left on Monday morning. So sometime after that, this Cod Burner, he made the first post about Optic leaving Call of Duty. Scum and Crim were insisting on John and Octane, but then John couldn't get out of his LG contract because there wasn't an even trade with him, unlike Octane for Formal. I heard that's what scared Rich Guy off, because if Formal and Karma stayed on Optic together and he only got Scump and Crim, then he wouldn't get a league spot. It would stay with Optic because of the rules at the time where you had to... You know, two of the four players had to stay or whatever, but because Optic was the current organization that the team was under, then it would stay with, you know, those guys. So in the end, Formal got traded for Octane and Scump and Krim got new deals. Then Octane, then Optic tried to get Zuma to phase but wouldn't sell him. So this is the Optic change when, you know, Karma and Formal went out the door, Scump and Krim stayed, and then they got Octane in for Formal, pretty direct swap, and then they were looking for a replacement for Karma. They were really looking for an aggressive sub to help support Scump. And it didn't work out like that. So, you know, FaZe wouldn't sell Zuma. FaZe apparently raised his contract to 20k a month. Then Optic tries to get Kenny, but he couldn't get out of his contract because his buyout, you know, he had to say 20 days in advance. So he was stuck. And then they eventually got stuck with Methods as their fourth. Apparently they even asked Kummer to come back, but he didn't. So again, you know, take this entire post with a grain of salt. Nothing's officially been confirmed, but then again, whatever pros and stuff say on Twitter, like you can't take too much of that for too serious anyway. This guy's been super accurate with what he said in the past, and it seems feasible. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that a lot of this is correct. So Anaheim in World War II, APOC or APOC, don't know how to pronounce it, but this guy was working with Unilad. He's pretty legendary. This guy, Curtis Stocks, all he has on his page is just esports. Tough to kind of tell who exactly this guy is. But yeah, he's been around the esports scene for a long time, working with the Unilad lot. And then supposedly, when Unilad, you know, got sold and, and they got rid of their esports division, and they really haven't announced anything about that, but that's basically what happened because they were struggling very much financially. Supposedly, Apple has been working with the rich guy. So, Nameless had a house party during Pro League Week 7 and 8. Some random night and rich guy went with the Optic and EU guys who think he all took him to dinner. One of the players said he was the only one of the party that wasn't a player or caster. So, people clearly know who this guy is if this is actually true. Champs World War II, this is where it gets good. So Rich Guy's original plan was to build around John and Attach and start talking to them after the event. So of course, the end of World War II now, you know, Optic had that tragic finish at Champs, top 24, and, you know, team changes are potentially rife all over the cards, and Rich Guy's trying to get into Call of Duty for Black Ops 4. We were talking about this name a lot. We thought it could have been some of the guys on Reciprocity. Doesn't end up being that way as far as it seems right now. And yeah, so this is basically the story. So he was looking for John and Attach at the start, then Nadeshot was already coming in with like 10k offers for a lot of players. So bidding wars already starting. Then they went after Scump. After Optic was eliminated, Scump and Methods were the only ones who stayed, while Crim and Octane flew home the next morning and skipped the autograph session at Champs. So Scump and Zinni hanging around with nothing to do. Apparently they stayed with Rich Guy a lot, had drinks together. And Scump was still unhappy with Optic and wanted to leave and start his own thing like Nade did with 100 Thieves. So he went to dinner and one of the nights Rich Guy and heard he still wanted a team. So Rich Guy and Apoc told him they wanted to try and get John Attach and Slasher. I heard Scump was going around the venue the next few days telling people that's what he's going to do. So somebody said that John asked Rich Guy if he would play with Scump and he said yes. Apparently, you know, he, Cobana says here that fans think that these guys hate each other, but apparently that's not the case. And yeah, that's basically what this entire paragraph is. One true thing is the players completely hate Larry's plus one, which is Octane's girlfriend, like Berta. I don't know if you've heard of that name. Even MLG stuff. Anyway, we'll go on through that bit. Scump couldn't leave champs after losing in groups because his mum and, you know, his, his family were all there. So this story that you guys may have heard about Scump talking to Karma, begging him to come back on the team, supposedly 
supposedly this is true. Uh, he also talked to players like Apathy and asked him to team, but it's normal for Scump and all the players to be wasted on Sunday night after the events. This is an interesting line. He was carrying a printed contract with him from Rich Guy, and I heard the offer was 50k a month for three years. Crazy money, you're like, what is that, 600k a year? Some Supposedly Scump agreed and wanted it down in writing, so Rich Guy flew one of his lawyers up. People are saying 50k a month is crazy, but yeah, yeah, 30k subs on Twitch. And yeah, this bidding war basically is what we've seen that's driven up the salaries of a load of different teams. And player salaries is definitely a topic I might cover in future videos. So anyway, let's get on to this Rostermania Black Ops 4. Everyone leaves champs and Rostermania started a lot earlier than, than before. At the start, Optic didn't know if it was 4v4 or 5v5, so they were planning for 4v4. They thought they had Scump locked up, but he went AWOL for about a week. That That's because John and him were calling around to see who wanted to play with them. I heard a rumour of Slasher, Scump, John and Kenny as a four, with Karma as the fifth. Supposedly then Rich Guy had the people sign NDAs if they wanted to negotiate, so no one said anything about the deals, and we had a bit of silence time for a point. One of Apoc's former players told me Rich Guy moved him to the USA for England, from England, full time to work with him, doing face-to-face -face meetings with everyone for two months. The players were also shown supposedly detailed presentations presentations about marketing stuff, salary investment and other things. So it looks like this rich guy knows what he's doing and he's heavily invested to try and get into esports. Then John and Scump decided they wanted Clay instead of Slasher, which is honestly mind-blowing to me. So he became the new target and they wanted to get it done quick. Then Scump supposedly started getting worried they couldn't get players out of their contracts and with their current teams, he decided to go back to Optic when Krim and him decided to get Tej and Dashi instead and add Karma if it went to 5. So this is what there was a lot of talk about. Karma still the most wanted free agent at the time. E United, Rise, LG, FaZe, etc. All these guys wanted to him. And for a time, apparently, he agreed to go to 100 Thieves. Then he decided he didn't want to go because he didn't believe in one of the players they signed up. You know, people rumour that to be Pharaoh. John and Karma also wanted to play together, so Nate thought Karma could bring John with him, but John said no, and he would only go to Rich Guy or stay on LG. He would only go to Rich Guy because Apoc is his close friend of eight years. This is one thing with the Apoc guy. Apparently, he's super close to John for a long period of time, and also Karma gets on very well with him as well for supposedly a decade. This is a video that he talks about it. You can find that obviously in the link in the description box below. So Karma and John also decided they wanted to play with Clay, so that was the new target. Here. And of course, Rich Guy supposedly liked to attach. He, you know, Rich Guy apparently wants to be hand off with the roster moves, let the experts handle it. So, you know, he wasn't too key, he wasn't too bothered about not necessarily getting attached. So this next bit goes into like Sherlock Holmes style stuff with people trying to find out the, the GPS location of this steakhouse that Clay went to. But anyway, Karma agreed on the core four and they decided to get gunless since they heard they were leaving the scene, or that was heard Rise were leaving the scene. And after selling TJ to Optic, they didn't have a lot of money. Gunless didn't want to go to the rich guy. So this team was gonna be Karma, Gunless, or you know, potentially Gunless, John and Clayster, mental, huh? Because he wanted to play with Formal on LG, that's Gunless. So someone said Rich Guy was gonna buy him anyway for 200k, but changed his mind when he found that Gunless's contract would end at the end of the year, so we'd only have him for one event anyway. So then there was this, this crazy situation with like the strip club and this party that supposedly this Rich Guy was playing for, and yeah, okay, there's a lot of arguably creepy and downright too in-depth stuff on like finding out exactly who was at the party, looking at videos. Okay, I'm just gonna gloss over that. But anyway, how things turn up, I think Clayster left the morning off, but I think people at the Barlow house saw him when he went to visit. This was the weekend before the 5v5 announcements. They thought the roster would be a four would be John Karma Gunless Clayster. If it went to five and FaZe wouldn't sell a tatch, they were looking at Jerd Fellow, Bant, Shock, Sensor, or Slack to the guy. So someone told me Rich Guy would have wanted Dashi because he's a fan of his, but they knew he was already to Optic. So, you know, Rich Guy was paying Apoc to live in the States the entire time. And this is when Optic Guy said Karma didn't answer his phone all day. So Krim decided to go over there the next day to find out what was going on. This is a kind of a big discussion point at the time. All the teams were trying to call him, but I heard from someone that Holly, close to Holly, that Karma really wanted to go to Rich Guy by then. Holly is Karma's wife, if you guys don't know. So, supposedly this is what actually happened. Krim goes to Karma's house in the morning, but Karma won't see him because he's playing PUBG or whatever. Supposedly Krim sat there for four hours, decided to leave when he found out Karma wouldn't talk. He almost gets to his car with another guy pulls up, and it's Rich Guy, Afok, and a lawyer in it. They get out and so Holly he says hi to them and they walk inside the house. So word starts spreading and Optic thinks Karma is gone for sure if Rich Guy's gonna fly in like that. So higher ups at Optic start calling Karma and he still doesn't answer and Holly tells him they all went out to dinner. I heard Hex was about to go over there and whoop Rich Guy's ass. So apparently this clip is of Apoc, like, or Apoc, whatever, in the house. You can see this guy opens the door right here behind Holly in this clip and
and yeah, it's pretty certainly him. He's got the Unilad top on, and he walks like him, looks like him, definitely the guy. And that's quite interesting anyway. That could have been the night that this situation was all going on. So then, with Karma supposedly out the door towards Rich Guy, Optic started talking to other players that were really looking for apathy. Apparently, Aix wasn't very happy because Envy were planning to buy out EG, as eventually happened, and they wanted to keep that team all together. But apathy is too loyal at times, Burner goes on to say, decided to stick with them even after a, after a raise, even though Splice was also trying to buy this roster as well, which was another rumour that I heard. So then Optic called EU about Arsites and Gunless wasn't available either. So John and Clay were happy and Rich Guy started doing more face-to-face -face meetings with the other players he wanted. So then Optic announced they're going to announce their COD team in the next episode, classic announcement of an announcement, and apparently the Rich Guy's team thought it was going to be Gunless, which I find kind of surprising. And then Rich Guy offered 300k each for Zuma, Attach, for a five of John, Zuma, Karma, Attach and Clay, but FaZe wouldn't sell the guys. So then supposedly Rich Guy's team were really surprised when Karma was actually announced. And then apparently, you know, Karma got really nervous because John's contract ended second week of October. So that was the earliest Rich Guy could sign him. And he was scared that he'd get left out of competing again and was really stressed about waiting two more weeks. Someone really close to the other players told me that they were surprised because the night before they'd all group tested and, and group texted and said everything was good, including Karma. After that, Clay wanted to stay on a United and then Rich Guy was left with just John. I heard he called up FaZe and offered them 800k for the whole roster but they said no Ghost and Spice originally tried to buy them too Ghost that's interesting as well considering they said they were going to leave Call of Duty so that would have left John and a bunch of leftovers so after 100 Thieves bought Slasher and signed and able to complete their squad Rich Guy decided it wasn't worth just signing John and a load of Amp players so all ended good for John because apparently he got a race of 25k a month on LG so Rich Guy apparently not very happy with this situation this pretty much sums up the planned rosters he was looking at so Scump, John, Attach, Slash goes to Clayster, then he was looking at Karma on the team once Scump decided he wanted to stay on Optic, and yeah, so this didn't end up happening for him in the end, likely that they still come into Call of Duty later down the line, and just in a second here we're going to get onto the actual identity of this guy, because basically all of that was story, but I thought you guys will find it interesting anyway, even if this video is really long. So yeah, I'm just going to brush over the rest of this section, he does say that Optic with J in charge, which is how it is now, is a much better place, the players feel like they're getting taken care of, unlike in World War 2, heard rumours that Orcs were still looking for money but some reached out to Rich Guy to see if he would invest in them etc etc all the pros in the scene benefited from Nade and Rich Guy being around since they all got raises and other bonuses so they're happy but I can see Orgs being mad etc etc you know Nade apparently went in at 10k a month for the players Splice went at 12 and then Rich Guy went in at 20k so, going on to the potential identity of this guy. CWL Vegas, they're playing roulette. People were calling this guy Edgar in person, including Scump. This is supposedly the guy. From what I know, I'm 99% certain Rich Guy is this guy on Twitter, and he has his own burner account. So, this is the guy anyway. Doesn't really, you know, you can't really tell too much from his Twitter page, but his followers are definitely very interesting, as, you know, Cod Burner says in this article here. So, you know, Nature, all of the old Optic and new roster, their girlfriends, the phase roster clay fellow saints big people in the scene you know he's only got 1300 followers or whatever but he's got to be a somebody to have all of that situation going on there's a lot of stories about how this guy was you know splashing the cash all over the place you know his twitch is twitch.tv forward slash edgar followed of course by apoc himself which is curtis stocks right here and yeah so apparently he gave 5,000 subs on twitch during christmas time according to his tweets Twenty-five thousand dollars right there and yeah there's a lot of other stories of him splashing a load of cash you guys can see this down in the description box at the link down there below and yeah so he's he done some tweets here about him being at bars in seattle etc etc and yeah okay so this is one example one and yeah so this guy reckons he bet his life it was this edgar guy on twitter this is what we know about this guy apparently Take this all with a grain of salt. He sold his technology company for $650 million and he's now an executive at a company that bought it. So he's balling out of control. He's sort of young, so maybe early 30s or something around that. 6'3", not like it matters that much. But yeah, like half Thai or something with what people were saying. So, you know, maybe you guys are around. You come to this, uh, the CWL event in London. And yeah, you know, we can we can get our Sherlock Holmes caps on and see if we can spot this guy around the place. And yeah, you can read through the rest of this for a second. So 
this supposedly is the rich guy, and it definitely, with this amount of money behind him, even the money is potentially wasted trying to get these players, and nothing ended up working out for him at the start of the Black Ops 4 season. Who knows what's going to happen going into later this year, maybe even Pro League, maybe a pretty decent team at Pro League decides to crack on with it, or things will happen further down the line, and it'll decide, okay, like now is the time to hop right into Call of Duty. So there are some final thoughts here from the burner on this issue. I'm really interested your thoughts on this entire thing because there's some crazy stories here the potential rosters we could have seen and whether rich guy is likely to be the this guy or you know you think it's unlikely or you know what organization could he potentially either invest in or make a startup himself because he seems to be taking things pretty seriously and which players will he actually end up getting down the line because i find it pretty crazy the fact that those kind of roster moves were even possible having like you know the gunless john like attach zuma all these kind of players thrown together even scump on that team on his own with no other optic guys is just completely mental the fact they could have left optic as, as an organization as well it kind of sets a crazy precedent maybe in the next in several months or years as to what rosters we'll see come together when this sort of money is flying around off the back of this rich guy so yeah that's basically all there is to say you can read through burner's final thoughts if you want to pause the video and as i say everything's linked down in the description box below so i hope you guys enjoyed really interesting situation leave any comments on it you may have and yeah like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time my name post when pushing up post or something Okay. Got one. Wow, one's they're mid. both laid down. There's two of them laid down back B. One's way. beating mid, one's beating mid. Alright, hang on. Got another one. Oh, oh my no. god! Rab's got the shot.